Thank you all. Good evening. Uh, Ambassador Germer, thank you for the kind remarks. Uh, you know, I'm reminded when I'm introduced as the 70th Secretary of State that Donald Trump is the 45th President of the United States, so turnover in my gig is a lot higher. So it's great to be with you. Uh, and thanks, too, to all the distinguished guests here tonight, members of Congress, fellow diplomats who are here. I also see a bunch of young people up over here to the left. I, it's wonderful that you are here tonight, too, to celebrate this Independence Day. I, I want also to extend a very warm welcome to all the Jewish community and faith leaders that are with us. It is great to be here with you. Uh, it's not only a privilege and a, a treat, um, but it's important. Uh, I, I, I want to ask you all just to think back until the moment that uh, Ambassador Dermer spoke about, 1948, a moment when David Ben-Gurion read aloud the final text of Israel's Declaration of Independence at a museum in Tel Aviv. Uh, tensions were running high. British rule in Palestine was ending that very evening at midnight. Arab states were about to invade. There was no electricity in Jerusalem, so few in the city could actually hear Ben-Gurion's words. But halfway across the world, America was listening, and it responded. It responded by formally recognizing Israel's new government just 11 minutes after that important announcement. The New York Times reported Yes, I'm going to quote the New York Times here tonight. Uh, the New York Times reported that the next morning, uh, America's bold action promised, excuse me, prompted the Jewish people to breathe a collective sigh of relief. And even though bombs were being dropped in Israel, and the survival of the new state was certainly far from certain, people in both of our nations were celebrating. That celebration continues here tonight, in this very room, in this special place. Uh, when we think about the statement, that Ben-Gurion read, we're reminded of a similar document, one drafted on parchment by a 33-year-old man named Thomas 243 years ago this, past, uh, this coming July. Of course, the historical circumstances were different in many ways, but the similarities are striking. First, each declaration forms its nation's political bedrock. Second, both speak of central ideas that are self-evident. In the American case, that's the truth that men are created equal and have rights that are unalienable. In Israel's case, there's a close parallel based on the tradition of the Hebrew prophets handed down, the right of the Jewish people to be masters of their own fate. Both documents, both documents were created by citizens who knew that their words must be backed up with military strength, who knew freedom requires an incredibly strong defense. And they were prepared to commit to that. Uh, both documents reject arbitrary distinction, with Israel's declaration guaranteeing, quote, the full social and political equality of its citizens without distinction of race, creed, or sex, and the full freedom of conscience, worship, education, and culture. It's these shared values that bind Americans and Israelis together and brings us together to celebrate tonight. Since Israel's declaration was issued in 1948, the Jewish state, in the face of so many challenges that we all know, has developed an inspiring example of free, democratic, and prosperous nation. Its population has exploded to more than nine million citizens today. I, uh, I had the chance to meet a, a number of those men and women over my time in service in Congress and now. I met some with my wife Susan just this past March when we were there. I met some of the most amazing people, one of them being your current prime minister in Israel. I had the chance to visit him at the Western Wall. I was truly honored to go there to that special place with him uh, on the day that President Trump boldly recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. It was, it was remarkable to be there as the fir first senior American to have gone to the Western Wall alongside an Israeli prime minister. And as you all know, and as Ambassador Dermer recounted, it was just one of the many things uh, that, that this administration has done to stand with Israel. We certainly know of the announcement with respect to our embassy. Uh, we've bolstered Israel's security, too, by applying maximum pressure against the single greatest threat to stability and security in the Middle East, and indeed to stability and security in Israel, the Islamic Republic of Iran. We've, we've pushed back hard, too, and this is important, we've pushed back hard, too, against any Israel bias at the United Nations, and we'll continue to post it wherever it raises its ugly head. Uh, we're unleashing a fight against anti-Semitism 
a growing problem across much of the world, including, sadly, right here in the United States. I think the most important thing that you all should take away from these actions by this administration is that they are instinctive, they are reflexive, and they are right. And we do them because of that, because they're in the best interest of both of our peoples. I, I had an opportunity in London just now a uh, handful of days ago. Uh, I was honored to be the first U.S. Secretary of State to meet with the Archbishop of Canterbury. Along with other senior religious leaders, we talked about the risk of anti-Semitism in the United Kingdom and how we can work together to combat that scourge. Uh, lastly, a, a, a brief word. Uh, the White House has a vision for peace between Israel and the Palestinians, which we will unveil this summer. It offers an opportunity, although no guarantee, uh, that we hope we can have a brighter future, future for the Palestinian people. I'll close by returning to David Ben-Gurion. After reading the declaration back in 1948, he was careful to ensure that a copy of it was placed safely in a deposit box, you know, just in case. Um, he was certainly smart to do so, but I think he'd be pleased to know that that document's greatest repository has been in the Israeli people themselves. Just as the greatest guardians of Jefferson's work are Americans past and present. Today, individual liberty, democratic self-governments, and national sovereignty are the cornerstones of our two societies. And along with our Judeo-Christian heritage, they underlie our country's permanent, excellent relationship. I'm confident that this will continue into the future. And I want to say to all here tonight, happy Independence Day. Thank you for being here. And may God bless you all, Israel, and the United States of America. Thank you.